Hey everyone, uh, this is Colfax Math. I teach high school math in Woodshop and today I was going to go over this wooden puzzle. Uh, you just have these three quarter inch hardwood blocks and you could build this cool puzzle. This puzzle really a big help uh, in spatial reasoning, go over a little bit of drafting skills, how to put 2D into 3D. So that's what we're going to do in this video is go over how to build this puzzle and how to do some of the drawings that'll go along with this puzzle. Okay, here's the wooden puzzle. I also built a paper carrying case for it so it doesn't fall all over the place. Um, there are quite a few constraints to this wooden puzzle. One of the constraints is that it's made out of five pieces. So these are your puzzle pieces. You only want five puzzle pieces total, not more, not less. In addition to the five pieces, every piece has to be between three and six wooden blocks. So it's made out of these hardwood wooden blocks. You can make these yourself in the shop, or if you can't get into a shop, you could buy these wooden blocks on Amazon. And let's go over to my desk so you get a better view of the puzzle, and I'll show you how to start putting it together, how to figure out how you want your puzzle to look. Okay, here's maybe a better view of the puzzle. There it is right there, and there it is put together. I know you're looking down on it in 2D, but there's the puzzle there. It goes together like this. And really to get started on this puzzle, I just took these wooden blocks. They're three quarter by three quarter by three quarter. And I use double-sided tape just a small piece of double-sided tape. And with my notebook and pencil, I kind of sketch out some puzzle piece ideas. And then when I had an idea, I would just kind of tape them together like this with a little piece of double-sided tape in between each block. Remembering that each puzzle piece needs to be between three and six wooden blocks. And then I put my whole puzzle together. And then I, I realized, well, it didn't interlock as much as I wanted to. I didn't meet some of the constraints. And then I would redo it. So with the double-sided tape, it's super easy to prototype. So you can pull this apart, move it around, try different combinations, and get your puzzle just the way you wanted it. Once I had all my puzzle pieces together, I uh, got wooden glue and masking tape and started to actually take it back apart once I had my pieces figured out. Took the double-sided tape off. Remembering not to lose how I had them put together. So just a little bit of wood glue or even white glue on there. It's gonna glue differently whether you use end grain or with the grain really quite a bit of attention to detail here and then you could clamp it with a spring clamp or a regular clamp or if you don't have a clamp you could just use masking tape to hold it in place you really don't want any steps there I don't know if you could even glue the whole piece together you might want to do it in a few different steps so masking tape to hold it in place once I have it all prototyped and I'm set on it. The other thing you might want to do too is you might want to take a photo or two of it so you remember how it goes together before you start taking it apart. I'm not taking too much it apart at a time. I'm just doing one puzzle piece at a time. So a little bit of glue and masking tape to hold it in place. Okay, then I let all my puzzle pieces dry, and then when they were finished drying, uh, I colored them in. I used, I think, a black Sharpie on this one to color it in, a red Sharpie or a red highlighter on this one to color it in. This one I used spray paint, and you could see the difference between the end grain and going with the grain, how the end grain just sucks it up. So you just color them in any way you want. Uh, I want five pretty distinct colors so I, I could identify the parts and pieces 
And I've actually done this one a few times. So I'm starting to get to know it pretty well. It is actually a pretty tricky puzzle. The next sheet I made was a two-dimensional sheet like this, just to remember, just a quick sketch to remember um, how it went together. So white's on the bottom with three reds. So that red piece would have to go there. Here's my middle drawing. Green would have one, two, three, four pieces to go there. Gray is two, so those two would go there. And then two black pieces right here. So this black block would go there. And the check would be the top layer should be three grays, a red, a black, a green, red, black, green, and all black. So that's one kind of map I could create to see how it goes together. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this isometric graphing paper and draw out each block. So here's my first gray block, so I title it. Here's my front view, my top view, my right side view with my isometric in the corner giving me an idea of what it looks like. And then dimensions go on here, there are three quarter inch blocks, so this would be three quarters. This is two blocks. 3 quarters times 2, 1 and a half. And my right side view is 3 quarters by 1 and a half. And then my top view, I can see, is 3 quarters wide. I don't need any more dimensions here because I could pick those up off of this. This would be 2 and a quarter long, and I get that from the 1 and a half and the 3 quarters. So again, this is a multi view, isometric. You need to have your information and a date written on there. Um, and you'd, you'd have a full sheet for all five of the blocks. You'd also have a sheet of a map, hopefully a better drawing than that, and how they all go together. Then you could also create a three-dimensional map of how they all go together too. Let's see here. This is my white block on the bottom. It's a lot easier to draw an isometric paper. I'll try and put a link to the isometric paper in the description. So there's my white wooden block on the bottom. The green block goes there. I can see that would go, no it doesn't, it goes like that. So that would just go on top of this, like that. And then I'm gonna do all of the parts and pieces and just tape them down so you can fold them up to see what parts would go behind it. So that's another thing you could do. Really, the whole point of this project is kind of develop an introduction to drafting skills and sketching skills, work between 2D and 3D, uh, kind of a really fun wood project without having to use any tools. The only thing you really need are the wooden blocks that you could actually buy, uh, a little bit of glue and masking tape and some um, highlighters or colors. Okay, uh, if you like the video, hit like and think about subscribing if you want to see more practical math videos. I appreciate your time. Thank you.